October last night. Yeah. I couldn't remember. I thought, I'm looking at all their blankets. Yeah. And how they don't look like they're awake. Well, good morning. We are not ready to start the service yet, but we are lucky enough to have our bell choir with us this morning, and they'll be playing Angels We Have Heard on High. So please sit back and enjoy their music.
Well, thank you, Bell Choir, for that beautiful music, and good morning, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to worship this morning. Uh, we're very excited for our cantata, and also, if you're wondering why there are so many blankets up front, we had a lock-in last night. So, if you guys are awake, can I get a... Uh... Okay, they're awake. We're good. Well, we're glad that they're here this morning, and Apparently, it was very fun last night, so that's always good. So, let's take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. We begin as we live in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able, and we'll join in our opening hymn number 250. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who comes to wake us from our sleep, who leads us into the light of grace. Amen. Let us prepare the way of the Lord by confessing our sin against God and neighbor. We'll take a moment for silent confession. God of all time, we confess that we have not prepared for your merciful reign among us. We ignore our neighbors in need and fail in the labor of justice and peace. In your mercy, forgive us. Grant us wisdom to welcome your light and to seek the things that will endure until Christ comes again in glory. Amen. Comfort, O oh comfort, my people, says your God. In Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven and all things are made new. Rejoice in this good news. Amen. Today is the fourth Sunday in Advent. Advent is a time to prepare for celebration of Jesus' birth. Just as we get ready for guests to visit or the arrival of a new family member, here at church we prepare to welcome Jesus on his birthday. During Advent, we can put away the distractions of the world and focus on God's promises to us. Today, we focus on the candle of joy. With great joy, the angels boldly proclaimed, Glory be to God in the highest at the birth of Jesus Christ. We anticipate that great joy today. When we light the fourth Advent candle, 
we thank God for the great gift of joy in Jesus Christ, the child who comes to lead us. A child will come to lead us. The Savior will soon be here. A child will come to lead us. Keep watching, the night is near. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. With your abundant grace and might, free us from the sin that would obstruct your mercy, that willingly we may bear your redeeming love to all the world. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now I invite you to turn to your neighbor and welcome them to worship with a sign of Christ's peace, a high five, a handshake, a hug, whatever it may be. And now we get into our section of the Word, where we'll be hearing our choirs sing, Sing Joy to All the World, a Christmas celebration. Enjoy. We gather to tell the story of Emmanuel, God with us. We gather to remember the story to wait and watch for him to come again, even now. Come, Lord Jesus.
in the beginning, God created human beings in love and be love. And God chose his greatest creation for this. But they did not choose God. Again and again, they turned away. But God did not give up. He kept calling. He kept loving. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. Though they walked in darkness, the people of God remembered his light. They tried everything to get back to God themselves, but they could not. They cried out in their distress. God heard them. He had a plan. Because they could not get to him, he would go to them himself. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. people of God had walked in darkness so long that they did not remember how to live in his light. So God made a plan to prepare their hearts for him again. He sent an angel to a priest named Zechariah with a message. The angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. He will bring many of the people of Israel back to the Lord their God. He will go before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Through John, God prepared the world for himself. John told the people to turn from their darkness. He told them what God was like so they could recognize him when he came. Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill made low. The crooked road shall become straight, the rough ways smooth, and all people will see God's salvation.
All was ready. God would come, but not in the way his people had expected. He did not come as a mighty king or as a mysterious force. He came as a baby, born to a woman named Mary. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. Her name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. God was teaching his people about himself. He does not come with force, but with humility and tenderness. He does not come through human action or will, but by his own perfect plan and loving power. Through Mary, God taught his people how to receive him through grateful surrender. I am the Lord's servant, Mary responded. May your word to me be fulfilled. God had done it. Jesus, Emmanuel, had come for his people once and for all. Though the world did not know that anything had changed, everything had. 
So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger. God had come for his people. He showed them how to live with his life. He showed them how to die with his death, and he offered them a new life, a new way. As he rose from his own grave, he did this not just for one moment in history, but for all the moments yet to come. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. God has come for us. We are the people who have walked in the darkness, who have chosen our own path. We are the people who have tried to earn our way back to God and failed. We are the people whom God has never forgotten, never stopped loving, never stopped choosing. My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. 
From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. People of God, he came for us. He is coming right this moment. He will come each time we turn to him. He is born into our world every day, and with his arrival, he brings his kingdom right here, right now. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones and has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised. Come, Lord Jesus, though our world is dark, your light overcomes the darkness. Though we have wandered, your love is steadfast. Though we lose our way, you have made a way. Though our fear is great, your joy is greater. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah 
Christ the Lord. And you should see Anna when she's conducting. I wish you could watch her face. She just, she smiles and she just inspires us. She's just wonderful. So, so thanks again. And now we'll receive our offering.
Savior of the nations, come. Make your home here in us. Feed us with your love, that our faith shine ever new, and our lives reveal your light. Amen. We now join in our prayers. Please respond with come. Holy Spirit, please respond with we wait for you. Guided by the light of Christ, let us pray for the coming dawn of joy, healing, and comfort for all God's people. Glorious God, you bless us with the gift of music. Send us out to sing joy to all the world as we celebrate the birth of our Savior. Let us shout it, sing it, say it, preach it, wear it, and share it in all of our days. Come, Holy Spirit. Lord of justice, strengthen and increase the ministry of food pantries, meal service deliveries, employment training programs, and advocacy for equity among all classes and races. Come, Holy Spirit. Merciful God, comfort your children who are mourning. Bind up the brokenhearted and heal our wounds. We pray for those who are homeless, imprisoned, those who suffer injustice, and those who are preparing for Christmas services and traveling to be with others. Bring reconciliation and common understandings to broken relationships. And be especially with Bill Hansen, Paul Wilker, Sharon Hulke, Carol Putnam, and David Gansky. Come, Holy Spirit. We raise our prayers to you, O God, in the name of the one who is, who was, and who is to come, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Would the communion servers also come forward as we prepare for Holy Communion. May the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it and he gave it for all to eat saying, this is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and he said, this cup is the new covenant of my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated, and we'll have two communion stations here at the front, and the ushers will release you, and then we will move to do the side aisles. Please, all are welcome to communion who wish to receive the sacrament of love and grace. Come and eat. The table is ready. And now may the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Just a couple announcements this morning. Uh, first of all, I'll be doing the last segment of our Advent Bible study in the upper room. You're welcome to come, even if you haven't come before. Um, we did a fun little quiz last time, a way of learning about uh, the Nativity story, and I'll show you some pictures of Israel. And second, um, you'll notice that the Kikatiti board is up. The missions team is inviting us. If you recall, Diane Lombrook gave a little children's sermon. If you would like to sponsor a child or somehow give to the Kikatiti mission as one of your Christmas gifts. So please check the board out there for the application forms and envelopes. It's right out uh, on the right, as you go to the right. And last, be sure to check the... Uh, grab and go and the back of the bulletin for our Christmas worship times next Sunday is Christmas Eve. I can't believe it. We will have uh, services starting at 3 o'clock, 5.30 and 10. So we look forward to seeing you there for our Christmas celebration. Would you stand now for our benediction? Now as you go on your way, may God go with you. May God go before you to show you the way. 
above you to watch over you, beside you to befriend you, beneath you to support you, behind you to encourage you, and within you to give you peace. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join us in hymn number 292. And now may you go in peace and prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God.